again, I welcome you to Moments of Inspired Teaching. I'm your host, Dr. Francis Myers. Uh, we are going to be talking, you know, the, the, the essence of this Bible studies is we deal with the triangle of three revelations that we always contend with. Um, the gospel of the kingdom, the order of Melchizedek, which is the priesthood of the kingdom and operating in the courts of heaven. And so the theme this month is really going to be in operating in the courts of heaven. So we are continuing with that theme. If you miss the first part, this is part two of a series. Uh, engaging the voices in the courts of heaven part one was with Robert Henderson. And my God, did he do an amazing job. And if you did not watch Robert Henderson talking about the, the voices of the courts of heaven, then you need to go to my uh, YouTube page on Francis Miles International. And actually, you need to subscribe so you always get videos when I put them up there. And uh, you can listen to what Robert did. It was a phenomenal. Today will be part two. Today, we are going to be dealing with part two. Our Bible story, our Bible story topic, again, is how to engage the voices of the courts of heaven, part two, with the emphasis today on the voice of the blood, which is the other voice in the courtroom. But today, the man we have on, on point, the man we have on point is going to be deep on the subject of the blood. This is an, an assignment, a mandate God has given him to unlock this voice of the, of, of, of the blood as it operates in the courts of heaven. I'm telling you, when I heard his revelation, I was blown away. I had to have him. He's one of us. Yeah, I had to have him today on this call just to bless you guys because I love you so much. Those of you who probably received the Elijah list, if you're, on the, if you're on the mailing list of the Elijah list with Steve Shoes, you probably saw the interview I did on restraining orders, restraining the enemy. It was an amazing interview. Every interview is different. This was very different because it was a prophetic uh, program. So we went about it differently. So the things I said there, I never said on it to Panacha, we see draws. So you want to watch, we're going to want to go to Elijah list, Elijah streams. I, I believe it's Elijah streams TV. I believe that um, you can get that show and just watch it. It was, it was powerful, powerful. Praise God. Amen. So again, our next in interactive class is going to be September 19. You know, you guys are being blessed. It's, I normally do only two of these a month, but I'm going to do three this month only because I'm building up to our conference in Alabama, which I'll talk about just very quickly. But our next class is going to be September 19th at the same 8 a.m. You know, we're going to be doing it. It's going to be a powerful time. Uh, 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. It's going to be engaging the voice of the court of heaven, part three, and this will be the final one. Uh, it's going to be the voice of the accuser, and I'm going to be my own special guest. I'm going to be teaching you on the voice of the accuser. My God, I've got some stuff on it that you are going to blow your mind. It's one of the voices in the courts of heaven. It's the voice of the accuser. And we are going to be dealing with that voice next Saturday. And then after that, you know, we are going to come together uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. Now listen, if you can come to Birmingham, you need to live stream this because this will be the first conference on the courts of heaven Robert has done that is dedicated 100% to the engaging the voices of the courts of heaven. So this is different from any other court of heaven conference we've done before because we chose this theme because we want to make you experts in how to negotiate with the different voices that are in the courts of heaven to get other people breakthroughs and most importantly, your own breakthrough or national breakthroughs. Like right now, America needs to be taken to court. There's a lot of stuff going on in America that needs to be dragged to court so we can end the nonsense. So you wanna be with us. So if you cannot come to Alabama for whatever reason, I want you to buy the live stream. It's only 1995 and you get 30 days access to the live stream after the fact. And by the way, that live stream, uh, I, I mean, that's after the fact, but it will also going to be given to uh, the, the access after the, the fact uh, will also be given to our people that are going to be there live. So you want to be able to be there, do the pay-per-view, but I'm telling you, being there in person is even much better 
because you can get the laying on of hands and be in the atmosphere where it's actually happening. But here's the thing. You know, even though there is general free ad, 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 admission, the sitting is limited, and already we are looking at an overflow situation. So priority for the main sanctuary will be given to the VIP guaranteed seating. So you can still come for free, and we are going to accommodate you. If you're not in the main sanctuary, then it's going. we have a huge screen in the overflow room, and our speakers at the end of every teaching are actually going to go into the overflow room so they can engage with the people in the overflow room. So everybody feels like you got to touch the speakers a little bit in, 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 phys in physicality. But if you can get, you can pay $29, it's better. It's guaranteed seating. And by the way, we, uh, we, you need to book your hotels. Those who are coming, book your hotel now because we have a special rate at the Hilton that expires on Monday before we have to book some more seats. But right now, like I told you, we're already on overflow the number of rooms are booked versus the people who are coming from out of state who have already paid to come is way bigger. So we know some of you need to book now because we know you are coming. It's going to be amazing. Now, 2020, uh, my, I mean, I'm looking forward to Kingdom Invasion, Gathering of the Saints. My God, this, you have to come with me in Atlanta, which is now my new base where I'm building my TV show, my TV studios. By the way, when you come in October, the TV studios will be ready and we'll be doing a tour of the TV studios while you're here. So you can see we'll be broadcasting amazing programs all over the world from right this place. Uh, we've got the, Judy Jacobs. If anybody who knows, these are the days of Elijah. Judy Jacobs, my God. You know, she'll be with us. She'll be a speaker and she'll be a psalmist for the conference. Uh, my friend uh, and uh, a spiritual advisor to President Donald Trump, Darrow and Belinda Scott, they are going to be with us. They're pastors of New Spirit Revival Center in Cleveland, Ohio. And my own friend and pastor, Chris Dego, my God, what a preacher. Man, he is going to be with us. Suzanne Hien, Jeff Johnson, Prophet Jeff Johnson walks in the glory. I'm telling you, in his meetings, people get, get precious medals. I'm telling you, things that are happening in his meetings, Jeff, are crazy stuff. You're going to have an amazing time. Pastor Kamel and I, we're going to be listening to the word of the Lord. It's going to be a great time. So again, you can go to francismouse.com and you can register or you can simply go to event.francismouse.com. Event.francismouse.com and all the events are grouped in one place. All the events we're doing this year before the end of the year. Praise God. Amen. Uh, I always encourage people and we need, we're living in dangerous times and one of the best tools I can give you is what my wife designed. My, my, my wife and I, we work together to design the courts of heaven, prayer and declarations on issuing divine restraining orders every day. There's a reason, there's a reason. There's a reason why I brought this man into our Bible study today, saints, because one of the things that are happening in the body of Christ around the world is churches are no longer talking about the blood of Jesus. You know, when is the last time you went to church and even had, had, a, had, a, had a message on the blood? It is pathetic, but that's why the church is becoming so powerless. And, and, and let's be honest, in some cases, full of demons. And the, the voice of the voice of the blood of Jesus, when Jesus shed the blood, it now exists as a connected but separate entity from the one who shed it. It has its own voice. It is the voice of everything Yeshua did for us in the blood. And that's why the Bible presents the voice of the blood as a separate voice in the courts of heaven. Jesus' voice is also in the courts of heaven. I know there's some people that may, well, I saw somebody say, you can't separate the blood from Jesus. Well, God did that. He <laughs> did. Jesus. But, he, but when, she, when it was shed, the blood became a statement of our redemption. That's right. As a separate entity, it became a, a a, a statement of our redemption. That's why Hebrews 12 says it's a separate voice. So don't argue with the Bible. It's right there in front of you. It's a separate voice. And you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. And then the writer begins to go through the different voices. And Robert did go through those voices. One of them is the voice of the mediator, Jesus, and then the voice of the blood. They can't be all the same. They're in the, in, but, but they're in the courts of heaven. I'm telling you, it's very, very powerful. Uh, uh, there is a question, Apostle, that you're going to be answering that's very important. 
that I've been asked and I'm going to be getting to very quickly uh, uh, because a very important question that people have been asking that I want to answer. So if you've got any questions, there's a Q&A section of the, of the application. Just put your answer there, your question there, and trust me, we are going to get to it. But I'm looking for a revival of blood consciousness in the body of Christ. Too much fear, too much COVID talk, and very little to talk about the blood of Jesus. Amen. And it's no wonder we are getting our fears. Our fears are being realized because we are more afraid of the COVID than we're excited about what the blood can do. Because again, we don't have, many pastors don't teach on the blood anymore. As a matter of fact, one mega pastor, so-called mega pastor, if I mention his name, you might know him actually said, we're well, talking about the blood just sounds so, makes the gospel very bloody. Well, he says, I'm sorry, it's a bloody gospel. <laughs> yes. Not, this is not, I'm not saying it in a, in a, a derogatory, it's a bloody gospel. That means the gospel of Jesus is bloody. Yes. We didn't come in cheaply. We came, we cost God everything. We That's cost right. God everything. And the evidence that we cost God everything was in the blood that oozed out of him to bring back to bring us home. So that blood, shed blood, is now a testimony in the courts of heaven. Because remember, G when Jesus rose from the dead, those of, those of you have been saying, because I saw a couple of people, they have never heard this before, and I get where you're coming from, but, that, but I understand I'm a scholar, I'm a theologian. When I bring people on this platform, I'm going to protect you. You know, this is verified revelation. We just are not ready for higher levels of revelation. But let me just bring it to you. When Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus himself said to the disciples, look, I am not a spirit because a spirit does not have flesh and bones. Notice he never made, said flesh and blood. The reason the Bible, he never mentioned blood because the Bible tells us flesh and blood cannot inherit. That's right. God. But Jesus said the resurrected body is, is going to have bones with flesh, but no blood. So the blood now was existing as a separate entity outside of the one who shed it. That's why he had to carry it to the throne of God when he talked to Mary Magdalene. Now it speaks separately in the courts in heaven concerning what he did. So you need to know how to fellowship with that voice that represents everything Yeshua did in making sure that diseases are healed, your cancer is broken, the diabetes is broken, the, the enemy's lies about your life are broken. That's why I brought this man. I'm telling you, it's a powerful, powerful revelation. The book is a way better because it's going to have a lot of time. Now, before I bring him back to answer your questions, I want to just do a screen share and do something very quickly here. That's just as important. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want to, since I just want to give you an opportunity to be a blessing to Apostle Lee Robertson, but most importantly, to give into the revelation. So I want you to, I want to do an, correct an offering right now. Could I believe that, I, I've always believed that whenever you hear a revelation, a new revelation is most especially, it adds new layers of truth in your life. It's in the most, the, the best thing you can do, you can do, to, you can do to cement that connection with the new revelation is so into it. You know, because a new, a, a new revelations add new layers to the altar of God. New revelations add new layers to the altar of God and raise it higher. And you need to be able to give into that. So there are ways to give uh, by mail. Uh, Francis Mouse International is right there. The address is there. Online at francismouse.com forward slash give. Or zele info at francismouse.com. You can give by cash app at francismouse.com. Or Vinmo at francis-miles. Uh, these are different modalities you can give. I'm leaving it up on the screen. Take your time. You know, take pictures of that of the screen if you need to. So you have you always have it. You know, but I want you when you give, write write a note so that as we pray over the giving that comes in, write a note sowing for a, a higher revelation of the blood. I want you to sow for a higher revelation of the blood of Jesus than you've ever had in your life. Sow for a higher revelation of the blood of Jesus than you've ever had in your life. You know, I, I, at this point, I, I want to give uh, a testimony that I think many of you might find very encouraging. And then, Apostle Lee, I want you to take us into the court of heaven 
and just issue, release the power of the blood over everyone that is attending the Bible study today. You cannot leave without praying for us. And then you are also going to answer a question after you take us into the court of heaven. But I do remember the experience uh, I had with the blood of Jesus that was, I will never forget as long as I live. I was doing a crusade in, Mabo, in Mamelodi, South Africa. It's a black township with about maybe 200,000 people. We had a big crusade over there. And I began to, the power of God fell in the, in, the, in, the, in the building we were using. And then I got a word of knowledge. And the Holy Spirit says to me, Francis, there is a woman who is seeing a vision of Jesus standing with a bucket bowl, with a bucket of blood. And, and I say, woman, I say that the Lord Jesus is standing next to you. You are actually seeing him standing next to you. And he's got a bowl of blood and he's pouring it over your head and he's curing you from whatever you are dealing with. Who are you? Can you please come? At the end of the uh, theater that we were using, an and, uh, and old woman starts running to the front of the, of, of, uh, of, of the church, running and just screaming. And I'm thinking, okay, God, is this, what, what, what is going on? I thought, Lord, so the ashes get around me. They're going to make sure this was not going to be, she was so emotional. She was crying, running towards me, you know, but the ashes stood in front to make sure that she was not coming to attack me. But when she got there, she was overwhelmed because she had brought a niece who was at the time 24 years old. The niece had been insane since she was 17 years old. Totally lost her mind. You couldn't talk to her. She had to have 24-hour attention. She was now 24. Could hardly say anything. Her eyes would just be dodging around. She would be, I'm telling you, she couldn't go to school. She couldn't function. And when I gave out the word of knowledge, she turns to the grandmother and talks to her and say, grandmother, it's me he's talking about. They had not heard her voice for seven years. And she begins to describe this man in, in white robes who was handsome, beautiful, full of love. He said he had a bucket bowl of blood and he smiled at me and he put it over my head and he said to her, my daughter, here's your blood portion. And he said, when the blood hit my head, he says, Mama, my mind, my mind came back to me. I mean, it was a huge miracle, huge miracle for that family. I'm telling you, mother, I mean, it was, I mean, we lost it after that. That's when I began to realize, my God, there is more to the blood of Jesus than we have realized. Yes. So that's why when he, a pastor that was given this revelation, I felt like, man, we need to bring him so we can, you know, give this to our Bible studies. Amen. Now, pastor, I'm going to bring you back because I really want you to take us into the court of heaven and, un and unleash the voice of the blood over all our lives right now. And then we're gonna, at the end of you doing that, I would love for you to, uh, I would love for you then to answer one, one or two questions. Okay, amen. Okay, so uh, sons, saints, uh, just prepare yourself now as, I, as we enter into the courts of heaven. Uh, Father, I thank you right now as we have legal right to enter now in the courts of heaven, we do so now with our incredible advocate, Jesus Christ, our Lord. According to your word found in John, that if we confess our sins, that we have an advocate, hallelujah, we thank you now. So those right now, everyone that, that uh, you just begin to repent for your sins, just repeat after me, Heavenly Father, I come before you now that I may speak to the righteous judge. And I ask that the courts will be seated. I want to repent for me and my lineage for every sin and any iniquity that is operating in my life and in my children's lives. Now, I take my seat in the seat of grace and truth that Jesus, my advocate, may litigate my case. Now I call upon the blood that speaks also in the courts of heaven. And I give the blood legal right to not only speak for me in the heavenly realm, but now in the earthly realm. And I thank you now as the blood is speaking 
I come in agreement with his freedom, with his health, with his wealth, with his peace, with his joy, and with his strength. Now, I'll apply those to my life and to my lineage. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Father, I thank you. Right now, as we have now come, I ask now that the righteous judge will issue not only restraining orders, but he will release high-ranking officers, angels of the court, to come in agreement with the voice of the blood and with me applying the blood to my life. Now, I speak to every sickness and disease. I plead the blood of Jesus over every disease, over every sickness, and every attack of the enemy. I apply the blood to everyone that's on this line. And now I say to the blood, speak to each individual personally, confirming that you have heard their cry and that you have came in agreement and have solved the issue in the courts of heaven. I thank you now, in Jesus' name, amen. We have a special uh, book that we are presenting today. Uh, it's available to our audience. It is the blood, the other voice in the court, brand new book of the, in the court. I'm telling you, this is the only book I know of that focuses on the blood as a voice in the court of heaven. The whole book is how the blood speaks for you in the courts of heaven, the whole book. I, I wrote one chapter in the book, then he, Apostle did the whole thing. He, I mean, he had a 30 day encounter with the Lord where God gave, gave him the revelation and he, he spent time with me and I said, son, you better write this book. You know, you better write this book before I do it. You know, and man, he did an amazing job and I was so mighty proud to join him. And it's available for order, right, pre-order right now at Francis Mouse that come at 30% discount, you better get it. And we're going to make sure that you, those books that you pre-order will be autographed by Apostle Lee Robertson. Praise God. So I'm very excited about that. Now, don't sub forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Francis Mouse International. So I'm excited about that. And well, listen, it's exciting. So we are not going to waste our time anymore. We are just going to get right into it. Uh, we have a powerful ensemble of panelists that I'm going to bring in at the end. But our main uh, uh, diet for today is the man of God himself, Apostle Lee Robbers. And Apostle, welcome to Moments of Inspired Teaching with Dr. Francis Miles. Please take your liberty. Amen. God bless you today, uh, Apostle Miles. Mama Camilla, God bless you guys. What an amazing opportunity for, for me to be with you guys and your audience. Uh, what an amazing time it is. I do want to bless you and bless mom for the work that you guys are doing, the trailblazing work that you guys are doing before all of us. We are so proud of you guys, and we are honored to call you guys father and mother in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, before I begin, I do, I do want to pray and ask the hand of God to be upon us as, as I release the word of God. So, Father, I thank you today, and I bless you for this opportunity. I thank you for this moment, and, and I'm grateful to be in this age, for this is an age that you shall release the most powerful anointing, the most powerful release of your glory to gather your people. And I thank you that you are strategically gathering your people right now, leaders that will, will, will go forth and do the work that you have called them to do. Thank you for those that's on the line today, those, whether they are in the States or overseas, we bless them now, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to begin by um, uh, reading a word of God that was given to me before I left for my 30 days. As Apostle Miles said, I was in the mountains of Sedona for 30 days. I was uh, beckoned by the Spirit of God to do my sabbatical. I'm not a stranger to sabbaticals. I used to do one once a year, but this time what made it different was this time it was in the middle of the year, not by design by me, but by design by God. 
And before I left, I had an instruction of the Spirit of the Lord. And he said to me, he gave me one scripture. It was Hebrews 9 and 14. He said, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? That was the only scripture I had as I prepared to go into the mountain. And as I prepared to go into the mountain, the Lord gave me this scripture and he said these words to me. He said, I want you to come before me for 30 days. He said, I want you to grab a basin of water and I want you to use the water as a representation of the blood. And he said to me, I want you to plead the blood over your conscience, over your body, and I will lead you for these 30 days. That was the instructions I had. And I did not know that God was about to download to me one of the greatest experience, if not the greatest experience in my life. I've been walking with God now for 20 years. And I say those 30 days that I had in the mountain outweighed those 20 years. And when I share with you, you many of you will probably have the same testimony. And so as I, I went into the mountain, I was, I was immediately brought to the mountain of Sedona. When I got there, I, I began to prepare and to fellowship with the Lord, not knowing what God had in, in store for me. And as I began to fellowship each morning, I am surrounded in Sedona. If you've ever been to Sedona, you know that it is known for the mountains. And the mountains are called Red Rock Mountains. And so as I, as I begin to fellowship each morning, the, this particular morning I arose and, and, I, and the rocks captured my attention. I noticed that the rocks was red. And this particular day, the, the wind was blowing in the valley. It was an amazing experience. And all of a sudden, dust began to fly. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord said these words to me. I have brought you here because I am something I want to give to you and to the body of Christ. And as he said this, the wind began to move through the valley, and I saw dust moving. And he said to me these words. What does the name Adam mean? And I want you to understand that God uses me greatly, and he speaks to me greatly through, through names, numbers, and colors. So a lot of times he'll speak to me and give me insight through names, numbers, and colors. So he asked me, what does the name Adam mean? And I knew by, by, uh, from time past that Adam means red man. And so I, I began to take a look around the surroundings that I was in, and I began to see Red Rocks. His name means Red Men. Now, my address in Sedona was 125 Sedona Drive. And the Lord says, look at your address. My address is 125 Sedona Drive, Sedona, Arizona. 125 in Hebrew means reddish. I'm going to say that again. 125 in Hebrew means reddish. Now, here's the scenario. I'm surrounded by red rocks. Adam name means red man. And all of a sudden, my address means reddish. And all of a sudden, the Lord said to me that I want you to look at the scriptures that when I formed the Adam, I grabbed dust and I blew in that dust and that man became a living soul or a living being. So in other words, what we're looking at is this very powerful statement, that the Lord has something in mind for the body of Christ. If we're going to be successful in this age, we must bring back the blood of the Lamb. And immediately after that, I heard these words, Revelation 13 and 8. And it says, and all the people who belong to this world worship the beast. They are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life. Watch this part. That belongs to the lamb who was slaughtered before the world was made. So the lamb was slain before the foundation. Now I want you to get this picture. The lamb was slain before the world was made. So the Lord began to minister this powerful truth to me. He said, son, if the lamb was slain before the foundation, even I obeyed the law of the blood. So in other words, everything that came in existence, everything that came in existence, everything that you see now came first through the blood. 
It came through the blood. So in actuality, the reason Adam name means red men, it was a prophetic announcement that when God grabbed the dust, that dust that was red is actually the blood that was shed or slain before the foundation. So in, in essence, Adam was technically wrapped in the blood of the lamb. This is very powerful. The God began to minister to me, and he said, I want to show you something, son. He said, Adam was formed outside of the garden, but the garden was made before Adam, and then I formed Adam and took Adam. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, God formed Adam, but in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, God took the man he formed and put him in the garden. The Lord said to me, I want you to look at it this way, son. The man that is wrapped in the blood, the man that is wrapped into my life, I put him, look at the garden, as my presence. Because in the presence of God, there's nothing missing, nothing broken. And we will all testify on here that the garden had everything that mankind needed. It had wealth. It had health. It had everything that man needed. It did not miss anything. There was no shortage. There was no lackness. There was no disease. There was no trouble. There was no division in the Garden of Eden. Now, I want you to see this image. So the man that is wrapped in the blood, God takes that man and put him in his presence. And the Lord says, this is what I want to do with my people that will come and enter into what you are about to enter into. And I said, Lord, what is that? He says, son, the elder church is known for pleading the blood. And many of you on this line, you can testify as I testify. As we grew up, we heard our mother, we heard our grandmother plead the blood. But here's the thing that the Lord was bringing me into. The elders that went before us, pled the blood on knowledge, and they got great results. Hallelujah. And they seen the blood do powerful things. But what God was bringing me into, the reason he had me now come before him every morning and plead the blood, it was he was moving us from knowledge to fellowship. That's right. Fellowshipping with the blood. Now, like many of you on this line, I've heard fellowship with the Holy Spirit, fellowship with the Father, fellowship with the son, and even fellowship with the word. And these are all true, but I have never heard fellowship with the blood. And the Lord said to me, I am bringing my people into the fellowship of the blood and fellowship strengthens the voice of a thing. When you fellowship with it, it strengthens the voice. This is how you're going to unlock the voice of the blood in the course of heaven. And as I begin to fellowship with the blood, as I begin to begin to fellowship with the blood, the Lord said these truths to me. He said, I want you to see Adam. Adam and Eve technically was wrapped in the blood. And when I moved him, I moved him in my presence. He said, what I'm about to do, son, those that enter into this fellowship, he says, the blood, those that enter into the fellowship with the blood, I will wrap them into my presence, and they will be allowed to move as Adam moved in my presence and freely ate from every tree. My God, that's very powerful. I want you to grab that truth. Adam, the Bible said that God said to Adam, from every tree you can freely eat. So what the blood does, when we enter into fellowship with the blood, the first thing the blood does, it moves us from a realm of shortage and brings us into the realm of God's presence where we can freely eat. It brings to life Matthew 4, when Matthew says in the fourth chapter, he said, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. This is how Adam ate. He ate, not only did he eat fruit, but he ate from the words of God. And God said to me, those that press in onto this fellowship, those that give themselves to this fellowship of the blood, those that fellowship with the blood on a daily basis, he said, they will be allowed to enter in my presence and go in my presence places and eat from trees, eat from revelation, eat from my body, eat from my life, 
places where others have not ate before. I want you to grab this part. If Adam, if Adam would have remained in the blood, what would the world look like today? We have this opportunity because the, the power of the blood is that even God obeyed the law of the blood, which means that everything that you see in the earth now came through the blood, which means that the blood was before the world was. So the, the power of the blood is to take you back before the tumor was established in your family. Take you back before the disease was established in your life. Take you back before poverty was established in your life. This is the power of the blood. And the Lord began to minister to me. And he said, son, I want you to see something. He says, the reason Adam had to leave was not so much as the sin, but he came from under the blood. He left the safety of that blood, and by leaving the safety of that blood, he violated the life of that blood, him and Eve, so therefore now the violation of that blood brings us away from the presence of God. This is why we must return, not just pleading the blood, but, but we must enter into the fellowship of the blood. Because listen, everything in your life began with the fellowship. The Lord said to me, everything in your life begins with the fellowship. If it began with the fellowship, it can end with the fellowship. Glory to God. And so the Lord began to speak to me more. And he said, son, I want to show you more. And he said to me, he said, watch this. He says, when, when you go to the doctor, when you visit a doctor, the doctor, after you filled up the forms, the doctor will come into the room and the doctor will say to you, hello, Lee, how are you? You're looking pretty good. And, he, and, and, and the doctor will say, but you know, you look like you're suffering from diabetes. Now he makes that statement off of two things. He make it off of what I've written on the form and by a first look at me, okay? Or the history that is on my form. Now, here's the problem. God said, because we are so religious, and the Lord began to minister to me. He said, he said, every time your spiritual father or Robert Henderson or any other great man or woman of God bring y'all before the courts, he said, the problem is not issuing the restraining order. He said, because the, the restraining order will be issued because your abuser, iniquity and sin, that is your abuser. Iniquity and sin is your abuser. So the righteous judge already know that you've been abused because of your history and because of what the iniquity has done to you. But watch this. When the doctor says to me that you look like you're suffering from diabetes, I will respond to the doctor because I'm very religious. I will respond to the doctor because I don't want to, I don't want to take his report. Okay, so I will say to the doctor that no doc, I feel fine. I feel fine. I'm, I'm good. But here's the problem. The doctor is going to draw my blood. When he draw my blood, the blood is going to testify that I lied to the doctor. Because the blood is going to reveal I do suffer from diabetes. And so the Lord said to me, this is what the blood does in the courts of heaven. The blood will bear witness, but you must speak the same thing that the blood is saying in heaven. You must speak it in earth because you know. And so in other words, what I should have done was heard the doctor's report. And the doctor's report has given me a, an advantage because now I have a name to bring to the blood. So in other words, you must understand it's a fact that I'm suffering from diabetes. But the truth is, by the blood, I'm healed. My Lord, how many heard that? And so, so the Lord said to me that the blood, when the blood speaks, the blood speaks for you in the courts of heaven. But he's not the only voice. He, he, he comes in agreement with the voice of our advocate, Jesus. But the blood itself, speaks for you because according to Hebrews 12 and 24, this is very powerful. According to Hebrews 12 and 24, it said, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the sprinkling of the blood 
that speaketh better things than that of Abel. And the Lord began to minister to me, and he says, he says these words, in order for the blood, in order for the blood to increase in your life, in order for his voice to get louder in your life, you must enter into a power of agreement. Uh, watch. Because, see, Abel's blood, now Jesus' blood is speaking better things than that of Abel. This is very powerful when you grasp the understanding of it. So Jesus' blood is speaking, and the Lord said to me, if it speaks, it bears life. If it speaks, it bears life. And he said to me, you must continue into fellowshipping with the blood. And as the, you fellowship with the blood, his voice will become louder and louder in your life. And he will begin to drown the other voices that are attacking your life that are attacking your destiny, that are attacking your business, that are attacking your opportunity. And you must establish yourself in fellowship because fellowship is where I clothe you. I'm going to say that again. Fellowship is how God clothed you. Fellowship is not only how God clothed you, but fellowship also is how God destroys the voices of iniquity. And so the Lord began to show me a mystery. And he says, watch this. As the blood speaks better things than that of Abel, Abel blood spoke, watch this, Abel blood spoke as a victim because his brother killed him. So when his blood cried out to God, it cried out as a victim, a, a, a innocent victim. But I want to say this because I want you to catch this. Abel was innocent in how he was killed by his brother, but his blood was not innocent. I'm going to say that again. Abel was innocent because he did nothing to his brother to die. But the blood that was in Abel was guilty because it had iniquity in it. Hallelujah. So God said to me, Abel blood cries as a victim. But Jesus' blood cries as a victory. Wow. Catch this. So he said to me, what you have to do is you must move yourself from being a victim. Because you can't walk as a victim and walk in victory at the same time. Holy hallelujah. And so there are a lot of people that remains in the victim status and they never enter into victory. And so while the blood is speaking, you are healed here. The blood is speaking, you are healed in the heavens. You can't in earth claim the sickness, these diabetes, these high blood pressure. This, you can't be a victim and walk in victory the same time. So what God said to me is that when the blood speaks for you in the courts of heaven, you must speak the same thing here. But where others are losing it is because they're not in fellowship. So when you're not in fellowship, you can't hear what the blood is saying in heaven. Hallelujah. And so then he began to explain to me, and son, I want you to fellowship with the blood on a daily basis, not one time. So I begin to fellowship with the blood, and I begin to fellowship. And one day, I want to give you this quick testimony, and this is very powerful. I was, I was fellowshipping with the blood, and I dipped my hands in the water of representation of the blood. Now, prior to leaving, I have been believing God for a particular property. I have been believing God for some acres. And so, uh, and so I went into this fellowship. And as I began to fellowship at the, at the Holy Spirit conducted me, and I'm getting ready to give you a mystery that will bless you today. And for those of you that will enter into this, I want to I wanna encourage you to enter into a fellowship with the blood. Don't just plead the blood. Enter into a fellowship because fellowship is how you increase and expand anything. And it's also how you excuse yourself and exit yourself from everything that the adversary has desired to destroy in your life. 
And so as I will begin to fellowship, as, as, I, as I dip my hands, I dip my conscience first. And then as I dip my hands, I pull my hands out. And I held my hands like this. And I began to I began to plead the blood of Jesus upon my hands to cleanse my hands. The most remarkable thing took place. There was hands behind these hands. Hands behind these hands. Hands behind these hands. And the hands went as far as my eyes can see. And I asked the Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, what is this I'm seeing? And the Holy Spirit said, the blood has brought before you. The, the guilty hands of your forefather. He said, you must repent of your forefathers who have shed innocent blood on this land. And I said, oh my Lord. And I began to repent. And I began to say, Father, forgive my forefather. I said, I release the blood. I release the blood over my forefathers. I release the blood over the innocent blood that was shed upon this land. And I cry out as, as a representation of my lineage. And I say, blood of Jesus, forgive those. Forgive my forefathers. And as I did that, the hands begin to disappear until my hands alone was remaining. And the most powerful thing took place in 24 hours. I received an incredible text by a woman of God said that, that they were visited at the night hours with a dream. No one knew about this. They were visited at the night hours in a dream. And in the dream, they were brought to my new home with acres and acres of land. I am here to prophesy. To those that's on this on this call, that as you fellowship with the blood, the blood will begin to cleanse and silence the voices that have legal right to hold or even alter what God has in your destiny for you. The power of fellowship with the blood is this thing: is that when you fellowship with the blood, you begin to it, it provoke His voice not only in heaven but in the earth realm. And God said these words to me. He says, "Son, the problem is this." He says, "Just like you went to the court, went to the doctor." He said, "What y'all are doing wrong is that when you come before the courts of heaven." When you come before the courts of heaven, he said, I issue restraining orders. He said, I hear you when Robert Henderson brings you to the courts of heaven. He said, I respond to when other men bring you to the courts of heaven. He said, but what y'all are doing wrong is that y'all are not applying. He said, while the blood is speaking for you in heaven, you need to be applying the blood to that issue or to that situation in your life daily. Hallelujah. And that's what we are going wrong, saints. We are not fellowshipping. We are fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. We are fellowshipping with the Word. And we are fellowshipping with the, with the Son. And we are fellowshipping with the Father. But we're not fellowshipping with the blood. And so that brings me to my next point, is that the Lord began to tell me. He says, son, they must, you must begin, and everyone in my body must begin to understand the age. And I said, the age? He said, yes. He says, in John 19, when Jesus was on the cross, out came him was the blood and water. The scripture said blood and water flowed out of him. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, we were all taught that this is the Holy Spirit age. And I know many of you have heard the same thing that I heard, that this is the age of the Holy Spirit. And that's accurate. But here's the problem. There's another force. There's another power. There's another authority in this age as well. Watch this. In Acts chapter 2, it introduced the age of the Holy Spirit. But in John 19, when the blood came out of Jesus and flowed and hit the grounds of the earth, it also announced the age of the blood. Hallelujah. My Lord. Now watch me. Because see, you have to understand that this is the age of the Holy Spirit and the age of Jesus' blood. And we must use them both. We must fellowship with them both to unlock the voices that are speaking in heaven so that they now can speak in the earth realm. Let me, let me show you what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit, okay, the Holy Spirit empowers you. The Holy Spirit anoints you. The Holy Spirit distributes gifts to you. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit empowers you. Okay. But the blood cleanses you. So, so we need both in this age. We need the Holy Spirit and the blood. The Holy Spirit, glory to God, hallelujah, will empower you to do the supernatural thing. The blood of Jesus will cleanse and purify and purge you that you may go deeper in the spirit of the living God. So it's not just the age of the Holy Spirit. It's the age of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus is the only thing that will cleanse you and purge you. Hallelujah. Grace was never designed to cover you. That is not what grace was designed to do. That's the job of the blood. The grace that God gave us was designed to strengthen us. This is why when Paul began to be weak in his flesh, he began to cry out three times. And, and the Lord said, no, he will not answer Paul, but he answered Paul by saying, my grace is sufficient for you. So in other words, grace is a strength that will cause you to overcome while the blood is removing every spot and blemish in your life. Once we understand this fellowship, once we come into this fellowship of the blood, along with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will correct you. The Holy Spirit will not convict you. The Holy Spirit will correct you. He will correct a believer, but he will convict the world. John says that the Holy Spirit came to convict the world, but the Holy Spirit was never sent to convict believers. But the Holy Spirit will correct you. Now, why am I saying this? Because you need the Holy Spirit and the blood fellowship. So when the Holy Spirit corrects you, then you can apply the blood to that thing and remove the thing that the Holy Spirit is correcting you of. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And that's why God said to me in the mountain, when I understood red rocks were surrounding me, my address 125, means reddish. 125 in Hebrew means reddish. I'm surrounded by red rocks. Adam name means red man. And the Lord said these words to me, son, the blood must return to the body of Christ. The blood must return to the body of Christ. And he says it must return in fellowship form. And I begin, he began to show me an incredible mystery. And he said to me, I want you to look at something. He said, he says these words. Paul said, first that which is natural, then that which is spirit. Uh, is, is that right? First in the natural or then in the spirit or if you look very closely, saints, if you look at the early pictures that they put out about the coronavirus around the world, if you look at the nations, if you look at uh, America, if you remember the images that they put out, every image was in red. America was painted in red. The nations were painted in red. Are you hear what I'm saying? All of it was what? Red. So in other words, what God was really saying to us, that the red represents the blood. So what is hap what's going to happen is there's going to be a deep fellowship. There's going to be a deep fellowship of the blood, and it's going to hit the body of Christ. The body of Christ is going to come into this incredible, incredible fellowship of the blood, and as we begin to plead the blood, as we begin to apply the blood, just like Corona covered the earth, just like Corona painted America red, just like Corona painted the nations red, we're going to paint the nations red, we're going to paint the, the world red, and the blood is going to begin to pull those out of, out of dark places, the blood is going to begin to pull those that are, are lost in, in, in the hands of the enemy. The blood is going to begin to pull them out, and they're going to begin to come and give their life to Jesus Christ. We're going to see the greatest soul revival on the planet in Jesus' mighty name because a group of people have decided to come into fellowship with the blood. And I want to say this before I depart. As I begin to fellowship with the blood, the Lord said these truths to me. Once you understand the age, once you begin to fellowship with the blood, 
He said the blood will begin to remove spots and blemishes. The scripture says that the lamb was offered up without spot and blemish. In other words, the lamb became the perfect offering. Saints, we have the same authority through the blood. The blood desires to move every spot and blemish in our life. The blood desires to remove. The blood don't just, the, the Lord said to me, the blood don't just want to forgive your sins. The blood has come to give you the life of the Father. He has come to give you the very essence. I want you to hear this. This is very powerful. The Holy Spirit said to me, when Jesus made this statement, when he got up, he said, he says, all power, all authority, both in heaven and in earth. When Jesus made that statement, that statement became a part of the blood. When Jesus said to Mary, I am the resurrection and the life, that statement went into the blood. When Jesus said, I am that I am, that statement went into the blood. Why am I saying this? Whenever you apply or release the blood, those statements tear down the thing that is trying to destroy your life. When you release, when we release the blood, that life, that resurrection, glory to God, glory to God, that multiplication, that wealth begins to now release from us upon the thing that we're applying the blood to. The Bible says in Leviticus, the life is in the blood. The life, what? Is in the blood. Just like you become like the Holy Spirit when you fellowship with him. You begin now to be clothed in the presence of the blood. On day 18, when I was fellowshipping in the mountain, I began to fellowship with the blood. And the blood began to speak. And the blood spoke to me. And the blood said, The blood said to me, I want to clothe you. And as he clothed me, as he came in, there was a presence that filled the room. Now, I know the presence of the Holy Spirit. I know the presence of the Father. And I know the presence of the Son. And when the blood came in, he wrapped me in his presence. And when he wrapped me in his presence, immediately there was a freedom and a light that came upon me that I never had before. The blood is designed to do that for everyone that's on this line today. God bless you. It's my decree in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to now ask uh, you to answer a couple of questions very quickly. Uh, do as quickly as you can, but the, we, we try to do our best to make sure that the, ans the questions of our viewers uh, are answered as much as possible. So here's uh, the questions. Um, two of the questions by Uche and B. Cambo are just pretty good much among the same, so I'm going to combine them. Um, how does one practically fellowship with the blood on a daily basis? How does one practically fellowship with the blood on a daily basis. Maybe you can tell us how you're doing it. Yes. Okay. Great question. Okay. Now I was directed to, to get a basin of water and the water was to represent the blood. I was directed each morning when I came to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, when I came to fellowship with the Father, I also was directed to fellowship with the blood. And so the water represents the blood and I will go through these steps. I would dip my hands in the blood. Now, there are two scriptures that I use. That's Hebrews 9 and 14 and Hebrews 12 and 24 when I fellowship with the blood. Now, when I went down, I would talk to the blood because, listen, folks, the blood is alive. If it's alive, then it can speak. If it's alive, then you need to talk to it. You would converse with it. The same concept that you do with the Holy Spirit same concept you do with the word of God, same concept you do with the Father and the Son, it is with the blood. The only difference is 
I will take a bowl or a basin, put water in it, and I will come and I will take these steps. I will dip my hands in the, in the blood and I will say to the blood, I say, I plead the blood over my hands and I cleanse my hands from every filth, from every unrighteous thing that my hands have touched. Then I will go back in, do the same thing with my conscience. Then I will do it with my eyes. Then I will do it with my ears. Then I will do it with my mouth. Then I will do it with my heart and my feet. And I will stand. As I stand, I will say to the blood, Hebrews 12 and 24 states that, um, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood sprinkler that speaks better things than that of Abel. I will say then at that moment, blood of Jesus, I come in fellowship with you. I come into unity with you. I thank you that in you is life. In you is joy. In you is peace. In you is prosperity. I apply that now to my life. I also apply the blood to every disease and sickness in my body, driving it out in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you do this each day, you, I will talk, I will even talk to the blood as if I'm talking to Jesus, as if I'm talking to the Holy Spirit. I will say to the blood, what are we doing today? And one day when I came in, the blood said to me, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to get rid of spot and blemishes. So he said to me, the blood said to me, just like the Holy Spirit spoke, just like Jesus speak, the blood said to me, today we're going to remove spot and blemishes. I want you to say, I plead the blood of Jesus on every spot and blemish of my hands, my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my tongue, my heart, and so forth and so on. That's how you enter into fellowship, okay? You have the, 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 the basin of water. Now, for me, every third day, I was instructed to pour out the water and put in fresh water every third day. Each individual is different. I have people in my house that I can did it to, and some, they do it different than what I was doing. So let the Holy Spirit lead you. Let her speak to you. But I will start with a basin of water and, and, and talk to the blood as if you're talking to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, what are we cleansing today? Holy Spirit, what iniquity are we destroying today? Holy Spirit, what defilement are we removing from our lineage today? That's how you fellowship with the blood. Praise God. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. This is amazing. Sorry, we're having some feedback here. All right. Thank you, saints. This is beautiful, uh, 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 Apostle. Actually, I've tried what you did. Um, I mean, that's what we now we do. Uh, when you were talking about, you know, it's really amazing. We, one of the things that happened to me and my wife is that we came into a consciousness of the blood of Jesus like never before. We came in a consciousness of the blood of Jesus like never, never before. And uh, it's amazing when you focus on something, how you, you become conscious of it. And yeah. that's what the fellowship is about, is the consciousness of what that asset God gave to us called the blood that's for us on a daily basis. It's been yes. amazing. So uh, I want to, uh, somebody else had one question and I'm going to have one of the panelists say something. Um, when facing demonic spirits, would you advise we speak the blood to separate us from these spirits daily? Absolutely. Absolutely. But here's, I want to take it a step further. When you're dealing with that, you need to find out the root. What is the entrance? What was the entrance that the demonic force came in? How does he have legal right? So I would bring him that evil spirit, I will bring him to the courts by the blood. I will release the blood. I will say to the blood, I want to destroy the iniquity that granted that, that spirit access to that. So you, you, want to, you want, whenever you're dealing with something, you always want the root of a thing. That's why the blood is so powerful, because the blood takes us back to where the root started. You see, that's the most powerful thing about the blood. See, the blood, that's why I quoted Revelation 13 and 8, because Revelation 13 and 8 shows us that the blood was before the foundation. It was slain before. So whenever you're dealing with anything demonic 
or any sickness or anything, you want to invite the blood to, to uproot the iniquity of that thing or uproot how that thing got there. Because everything is not always an iniquity, but it is a root to something. Something started it. So you want to just not only plead the blood on it, but you want to unroot it so it won't have access back to in your life. Praise God. Amen. That, that's, that's well said. Uh, okay, so everything that has, I think, Somebody says, I, I, I feel that we split the blood of in the courts only. only. I, would, I don't think that's the case, but she says, do, you only apply the, uh, do we only apply the, the blood when we are in the courts of heaven? Or can we you know? Yeah. No, no. And that's what fellowship does. See, you don't have to go to the courts. See, what, what the blood wants you to do, see, one of the things that the blood said to me in the mountain was, what we are doing wrong is, like, for example, let's say I'm battling with something. Okay, the, the blood in the courts, see, the blood already has your deliverance. We need to understand that. Blood already has your deliverance. The blood already has your healing. The blood already has your breakthrough. Here's the problem. We're not applying the blood in our life on that situation or that thing that you're battling with. So, no, you don't have to be in the courts of heaven to plead the blood. I plead the blood daily. I plead the blood now uh, uh, constantly when I'm walking around. I plead the blood. You know, I apply the blood to something. When the Holy Spirit quickened me about something, I plead the blood over that thing. So no, you don't have to be in the courts of heaven. But what we are doing wrong is we're not applying the blood here on earth, even though we know we're still battling with something or you're still battling with, with a, 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 a habit. You see, when you enter into fellowship, that's what the blood is going to do. When you enter into fellowship, as you apply the blood to that thing that you're battling with, you'll notice that thing will begin to lose its strength and begin eventually to dissolve out of your life. And you will see a total freedom. Because one of the greatest testimonies that we are receiving through this is that people are saying how free they feel, how light they feel. The, the freedom is uncanny. There's some people, they're so free uh, from doing it that they don't believe, it's hard for them to believe that they're free. And that's what the blood does when you apply it to whatever you are facing or whatever the habit that you're trying to break. You know, you're trying to break this habit, but you can't seem to break it. Plead the blood of Jesus over that thing on your fellowship in each morning. You don't have to be in the courts to do that. You can do that here. All right. One more, one last thing, and then we're going to... Uh... Oh, yeah, two more. He said, can you plead the blood of Jesus on behalf of siblings? Yes, absolutely. In fact, we have a testimony where a young lady, um, when she got this truth in our church, she asked me, can I bring my family? I said, absolutely. She brought her family in and began to plead the blood over her family. Now, her mother and her daughter have been spoke in a long time. Her, her daughter, her, I mean, say her mother, her mother and her sister, her sister drove a great distance to, to see her mom. And they both repented to each other because this young lady started pleading the blood over her family. Fantastic. Beautiful. Wow, 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 wow. One last one is from Bishop Campbell. Does taking communion daily as an act of, be an act of fellowship as long as it does not become a familiar act losing its liberatory power? What do you say to that? Well, one of the things that um, I, I, I did, I, I experienced in the mountain is not, a, the Holy Spirit stopped me from making it become a ritual or religiosity. Yes. So what he, he would do is he would cause me to pause and I would begin to meditate on, on the power of the spirit, meditate on the power of the blood. And then as I sat down, remember fellowship means just that, fellowship, take time. Take time. See, true fellowship is, is not just you talking all the time, but what is the Lord saying to you? What is the blood saying to you? So you have to take time. So don't rush into it. This is what I tell my folks here. Don't rush into the act. Sit, meditate. Let the spirit, let the blood beckon you. And that's how it become with me. 
um, where it, it hadn't become a religious entity or religious format. In fact, one time in the mountain, the blood, the blood stopped me because I was getting ready to go straight into it. And he stopped me and said, no, not now. And, 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 and I didn't do it till later. So you want to spend time waiting. And that's the power of fellowship, waiting. And one of the things he said to me was so powerful, and I'll share this with you guys. He said to me, he said, don't enter into prayer to end the prayer. He said, enter into prayer to be released from the prayer. There's a difference. Sometimes we rush into prayer and fellowship, you know, because we got a lot of stuff on our minds, stuff we're trying to do, and we, we, we don't give ourselves in full fellowship or prayer. And we end up praying to end the prayer. But uh, he said to me, don't enter to pray to end, enter to pray to be released. Very good. Very good. I love that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hello. Listen, it is amazing. I, I want to hear now from my, quickly from one or, one or two of my panelists, and then I'm going to uh, uh, close us out. We are, again, uh, Pastor Jeffrey from Zimbabwe, if you can um, uh, put you on your video, if you are able to put you on your video, that would be great. Uh, I'll ask you to unmute yourself if you're able to hear me uh, and just tell us something. Uh, speak to us. Okay. I don't know if your video can come on. Uh, praise um, God. Amen. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying my video. I can't, oh, there you are. There's my yes. video. <laughs> well, <laughs> Apostle Lee, point? where do I even start? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Jeffrey! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what a revelation. My goodness, wow. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Very clearly, uh, we have been applying the blood in a very limited way. Um, two things I want to very quickly say. I think we need a part two of, of, of this teaching. Uh, I was frantically taking down notes, uh, and I know for sure I, I, I did miss some things. Uh, so the second thing I'd like to ask for is that this webinar be on YouTube as quickly as possible. I'll need to listen to it three, four, five times before I grasp uh, the, the revelation that has come down. Uh, and then the third thing is I, I want 10 copies of that book, uh, like right away. <laughs> because wow. I, this, this, this is, the, you know, the thing with the new revelation when it comes, very rarely does revelation come, at least, for me, and, and it's totally transforming and completely new and there's no trace. This has done that. And wow. what is interesting is that when I now go back to the Old Testament, I see the blood everywhere. No wonder, you know, going to the tabernacle was a very bloody experience, just to quote uh, what Dr. Mouse was still saying earlier on. Uh, and so that's why the gospel is what it is. And in the New Testament, we seem to have uh, uh, minimize the application of the blood. And today, yes. I think you've liberated us. Thank you so much for this revelation. Thank you. Thank you. May God richly bless you. And thank you, Dr. Maz, for uh, uh, hosting this and exposing us to such deep truth. That, that, that's all I, I've got a lot of homework to do, a lot of reading, a lot of deep fellowship, real fellowship now uh, that I'm going to do. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. Thank you and God bless you. If those who want to be able to give an offering to bless Apostle Lee Robertson, these are the different ways to give. Take a picture of it. So you have what is on screen. I'll take it and uh, sow an offering. But when you sow it, let us know you are sowing for a higher revelation of the blood of Jesus in your life so we can be praying in agreement with you. Praise God. Um, praise God. We just prayed. Now, our next, our next Bible study is going to be next, this coming Saturday, you know, uh, same time. Topic is engaging the voice of the court of heaven. It's going to be a part three. And I'm going to be teaching on the voice of the accuser, the voice of the accuser by Dr. Francis Mouse. Again, my wife and I are so blessed to have incredible partners like we have here in the U.S. and around the world. We love you so much. And um, I see somebody here did ask a question Apostle Lee, maybe on your way out, you could answer it. It is, um, how do you apply the blood to inner healing? Okay. Now, everything has a name, okay? Emotional, inner healing is emotional damage or whatever the case may be. 
when you enter into fellowship, let me say this first, everyone, when you get the book, uh, there's a prayer in there and it'll be an invitation to go into the 30 day um, prayer of fellowship as I done. So it's, it's explained much way more better in, in the book and the invitation and you'll go through it. Inner healing is the same thing as an external healing. So whatever the area is, whatever, whatever you're facing when it comes to inner, inner healing or, or, or whatever the problem may be, you just simply say to the blood, I want to reiterate this, and I want to keep saying this, and I know this sounds strange because when I heard it in the mountain, I too was, was shaking because I never heard of fellowship with the blood. But as dad has said per uh, perfectly, the blood is alive. The blood speaks. So when it comes to inner healing, the same thing. You speak everything based off of us talking, speaking to the Holy Spirit, the blood, Jesus Christ, the Father. Same thing when it comes to inner healing. You know you need an inner healing. You say to the blood, I, 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 I want this void gone. There's a teaching in the book that deals with void, removing void. And the blood removes the void. So you say to the blood, I want this inner emotional damage that's happened with me. I want it gone, blood. I surrender. I apply the blood to that. You simply apply the blood. You go through the motion with the water, everything. You apply the blood to that. And the blood will remove and bring inner healing to you. You simply submit to the healing that's in the blood. And I want to keep reiterating, the blood is alive and it desires conversation. Praise God. It's exciting. What a day. Apostle Lee, you've been amazing. As always, we just love and appreciate you. You know, we just love and appreciate you for all that you do. You know, we thank God for you. Just thank God for you and everything else that you represent. We are grateful to God. Amen. You know, we're grateful to God again. Listen. Uh, if you live in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, September 24th to the 26th, just after Rosh Hashanah, uh, we are going to be doing with my dear friend, Apostle Robert Anderson, Apostle Lee Robertson, and Apostle Rodney, uh, Obsborn and Pastor Camilla Myers. We are going to bring the word of the Lord to you in a powerful Court of Heaven conference, fully dedicated to the voices of the courts of heaven. We're going to give each voice it's it, it, it much needed time because we want you to understand that so you can know how to operate. You know, and so please, please, please sign up, you know, and uh, I encourage you, you know, to use the VIP. You know, the general admin, admission, you may end up in the overflow room. So if you want to be inside the main sanctuary, I just in, really advise you to use the uh, to pay the $29 for those who are going to be live and the night on a live stream. Wow. Amen. So I want you to be able to, to do that. Amen. So again, thank you so much. We love you. Uh, we'll see you next Saturday at the same time. And I'm going to be teaching on the voice of the accuser. It's the only voice in the court of heaven that does not speak for you. <laughs> so we need to understand the only adversarial voice in the courts of heaven and how it get I mean, it's going to be an amazing Bible study and we're going to have an amazing time. Thank you. I love you so much. Amen. Listen, if you are, if you're not signed up for my Bible studies, go to francismouse.com on the homepage. Make sure you are signed up for my Bible studies. Shalom. Shalom. I love you all. God bless you. Bye-bye.